you join me in the back of a Rolls-Royce Phantom, we've picked up this extended wheelbase from the Goodwood factory, and we're heading to where Squilly and their Rolls-Royce owners go in the winter, Courcheval, France. And we're doing it properly, like a Rolls-Royce owner would, or, as they're known in the brand, a patron of luxury. So I'm dressed like an Arnie Gark's son, the booze cabinet is full, and I have a chauffeur, because I'm pretty sure that being back here is the way to travel. Spirit of go up, Spirit of Ecstasy go down, Spirit of Ecstasy go up. Now, Rowan has this all wrong, because if you own a Phantom, you want to drive the Phantom. Only, drive is too crude a word for what you do in a Phantom. You fingertip it. This is such a genteel, placid, calm car that you never think about anything so crude as ride and handling. Instead, you just sit here. The time passes and distance passes, and then you get to wherever you're going and you're just as you were at the start. So, we're a couple of hours in now and I am still fresh as a daisy. The Phantom has always been the nexus of luxury and basically the Death Star of Auckland's, and there is so much back here to keep you entertained. Under this gorgeous wood panelling, I have all the controls for my entertainment. Press this button and the table lowers, and then the screen pops out. So I can watch films, do some buying on QVC, check my stocks and shares. And I can also do it while having a cigar if I choose, or getting drunk whiskey down here, or special occasions, champagne. Your divorce has gone through, you've succeeded in a new business, you've bought an island or something. If you own a Rolls Royce, you've kind of made it, especially an extended wheelbase. By the way, thanks all. But if you want to ball in the big leagues, you need something bespoke, something unique, and we have that. See, we're the only people in the world to have fitted a ski rack to the back of a Rolls Royce Phantom. And not just any ski rack, but a ski rack that can hold a pair of 50,000 pound skis. That's 8,000 year old Chinese bog oak and 24 karat gold bindings because it's a Rolls Royce and we're going to Courcheval. So we'll see you on the slopes. Rowan can act the rich kid in the back all he likes, but it doesn't change the fact that they don't do first class toilets at French service stations. Rowan, that's disgusting. Honestly, you can't take him anywhere. So we're 500 miles in now and a long way from Goodwood this morning and the Euro Tunnel. And I've had a long time to think and I am still in the best seat in the Rolls Royce because there's 130 kilos of sound deadening around me, six millimeter double glazing. It is so quiet, elegant and relaxing. And while Ollie's been doing a bit of this and a bit of this with his feet, I've been chilling out. I've read a newspaper about money. I've bought some Bitcoin, completed Candy Crush across the continent. That's efficiency, and, well, you can't do that behind the wheel, can you? So, you want to be here. So, welcome to Courcheval. That was 15 hours in the back of a car, which I think in any other car in the world, I'd be pretty much dead by now, but it is incredibly comfortable, and I feel amazing relaxed for it. We're at the Six Senses in Courcheval, which is where Rolls Royce type people stay at this time of year, apparently, so I'm gonna go do Rolls Royce type people things. I think that means raclette and maybe some wine. Ollie, clean the car, please. The next morning, I thought I'd do a bit of shopping. Unbelievably, there are nearly as many diamond shops in Courcheval as ski shops, but there's also the Lalana Hotel. It's one of the most luxurious places to stay, but also doubles up as a Rolls Royce pop-up shop. All you've got to do is swing in, choose your spec, whether you want the 20 grand hamper, sign a big check, and you've bought yourself a Rolls Royce. Four people already have this week. Right, that is quite enough shopping for one day. Time to go for a drive. Now there are thousands of corners around here and at every single one of them you sort of have to prepare the Rolls Royce, sorry, Rolls Royce, for what's coming. So way before you even get to a corner you find yourself applying just a little bit of steering lock just to give it fair warning and to get the car ready. Then when you do get to the corner and turn in, something quite surprising happens. You discover that it actually has really good grip and holds its line quite nicely. That's a surprise. What's less of a surprise is that there is very little steering feel and the steering is very, very light. I wouldn't say this is exactly fun to drive, but it is quite satisfying hustling it up a difficult road. Satisfying, 
but maybe not very becoming. I think we've probably had enough of this. Rowan, isn't it about time you went and had a ski? While cruising around on my planks of ancient Chinese bog oak, I had time to think over what can only be described as a first world problem. See, if you have spent over half a million quid on your new Rolls Royce Phantom, where do you sit in it? Well, to be honest with you, it doesn't matter if you're in the front or the back. It's such an exquisite and well-engineered piece of luxury that it's just a joy to be around, just in this cabin, soaking it all up. As for the lifestyle, unfortunately, I've got to pack that in, but not for one more little treat. Fancy a race back to London, Ollie?